or good afternoon, depending on which side of the world you are. I'm in Orlando, so it's like 6 a.m. right in Orlando right now. I Today, I will be bringing you a presentation on female combating in Liberia. Uh, this research project actually has a co-author, and my co-author is also in the U.S. His name is Dr. Daniel Benini. Our outline. The outline includes an uh, introduction or research question, our literature review, the theoretical framework, the major argument, and our measure of participation. How do we measure participation? Our data, of course, methodology and conclusion. Actually, this research is important in two folds. That's the purpose. One is in the academia and another is policy. From my academic standpoint, yeah, it's, it contributes to the general literature on political violence, female combatant, and post-conflict recovery. From a policy standpoint, it has less general role in peacekeeping by encouraging gender participation and women empowerment in a post-conflict society. The research question. Our research question is, what kind of role do female combatants assume in a post-conflict society? And this is very important because uh, usually or conventionally, after the Civil War, what you have is a regular or standard DDRR program. That is disarmament, demobilization, and reintegration program. But we are asking a follow-up. What happened? What role, especially female, what role do they assume after the standard DDR program. Literature. There are tons of literature out there on female participation in armed conflict, but we classify the literature into three groups. Uh, this is our own classification. So uh, there may be other classification out there that we did not include. Uh, the first group of literature actually argues that female participation reduces the threshold of violence. That is, if you have female in armed conflict as, as combatant, that conflict is gonna produce low level of violence. The second group of literature, the group of scholars that, that treats female as victims. They say female is a vulnerable population. So you hear most of the time, whether you're in policy, you hear the war, women associated with fighting forces or women associated with armed conflict. So this group of scholars actually look at female from a point that they are victimized during armed conflict. So they are treated as victim of the conflict. And the third group of literature, which we call like a tire group, this is a tire group of literature. I mean, this group of literature actually treats female as equivalent to their male counterpart. They say, uh, a female are given the equivalent what is weapon, what is resources, and place of in the same situation or circumstances, they have the ability to perform as their male counterpart. That is, female can have the ability probably to rape, for example, like in Sierra Leone and other places that we'll talk about later on. Theory. Our children actually is, is in three dimensions or three, three era. We look at a uh, female prior to the conflict in Liberia, and we look at female during the conflict in Liberia. We look at female after the armed conflict in Liberia. But female during the conflict in Liberia, actually female play a backseat in Liberia during the armed conflict, prior to the armed conflict. The, with few exceptions, like Ellen Johnson, Saleem, and maybe Angie Bruce Runner, they were the exception. But female are actually playing a backseat in the political development in Liberia prior to the armed conflict. That's what we're looking at. The second, the second aspect, which is the second era we look at, is female during the armed conflict. With that, we look at female as combatant. That is, we're looking at female brigades. There were brigades that were exclusively made of female, and there were female commanders during the armed conflict in Liberia. We also look at female as non-combatant during the conflict. There were female, there were a group of women who were non-combatant during the armed conflict, but these women stood for peace. They launched a campaign that brought peace to Liberia. So we'll look at that as another approach we we'll look at. And then finally, our third approach is to look at female at the end of the Civil War. 
with this, we looked at the advent of political parties. There were a lot of political parties created with women wing in these organizations immediately after the armed conflict. And we look at women groups, women groups that gear towards uh, multi-party elections, civil education, and the whole nine yeah, That's what we look at in our theory. That's our last aspect of our theory. The, the, the two photos right here just illustrate what I've explained. The, the one on my left, this one, this one indicates uh, combatant, female as combatant. This one on my right indicates female as non-combatant. The lady here, this lady is called uh, Black Diamond. Black Diamond led a group of female brigade. They are called uh, Women Artillery Commando. This is a group of female brigade from one of the rebel groups during the Second Liberian Civil War. And this group is noted for recapturing the free port of Morovia from Charles Theta. Black Diamond and her, and her group of female brigade recaptured the free port of Morovia from Charles Theta during the Second Liberian Civil War. The one on my right actually depicts the non-combatant female that geared toward peace in Liberia. The lady here is Lima Bowie. By the way, Lima is a Nobel laureate for peace. Lima had a group of non-combatant female who campaigned for peace in Liberia. This group of women uh, conducted sit-in actions, I mean, demonstration. I mean, at some point in time, they refused to go home until peace returned to Liberia. But one of their people to achievement during this time was that they negotiated a ceasefire. Yeah, these, these group of women actually were like mediator because at some point the rebel refused to talk to the government in one of the civil conflicts like Charles Taylor. And then Lima and her team actually negotiated a truce between the, the regime and, and the rebel group. So they were very interesting. Now, predicated on that, this is our argument. Uh, we argue that the experiences of female combatants during the Liberian Civil War in combination with other wartime role of female activists make them to assume more significant responsibility in post-war post Liberia. That's our argument. And our approach, this is our approach to this argument. Our approach is like two levels, qualitative, two qualitative levels. The first one draws on data. We, we draw our first approach on data. And the second one draws an interview of participants, especially the interview of former combatants and non-combatants. We're talking about political actors, refugees, and IDPs. And then the process was hybrid, was a mix of face-to-face, -face, Zoom, and telephone interview. But during, this, during the interview data gathering process, we asked a series of questions. But one question that is very important to this research has to do with uh, why do women join rebellion? Why female participate during armed conflict? That question is very important and let, let you know data always speak for themselves. The data speak for themselves. So what we got from that question, we'll talk to let you know, the data says that women join uh, principally because 50% of them say, okay, we join the rebellion for protection. They need a protection. And contrary to that, opportunity was the least. I mean, very few ladies said they joined the war because of the opportunity. Very few. I mean, like 1%. But most of them said they needed protection. Of course, you see volunteer, PAE, Fed, and the rest of them have all the indicators. The case of Liberia. The case of Liberia is very important because of what I just mentioned. And the case of Liberia is important because Liberia produced all these ladies after the armed conflict. All right, this lady... This woman, actually, she's there now, by the way, but she's Ruth Sano Perry. She was the, the interim head of state for Liberia during one of the transitional leaders in Liberia. I mean, she had a Liberia to the first election that led Charles Taylor as president after the first armed conflict, Ruth Sano Perry. This woman is, is, this woman is the vice president. Her name is Joel Howard Taylor. She's the current vice president of Liberia. And the greatest of all is Ellen Johnson Salib. Ellen Johnson Salib actually led Liberia for two consecutive terms. I mean, she led Liberia post-conflict elections. I mean, that was Liberia's first major election after the armed conflict. And she secured a two-term in office. So the case of Liberia is very important because Liberia has managed to produce all these ladies at the end of the armed conflict. In conclusion, uh, to conclude, we said that uh, 
Liberian women actually secured victory, two wins after an armed conflict. And I know whether you were a scholar or you were in a policy belt, I mean, you'll be wondering why at the time Liberian women were securing two wins for a female candidate, the United States, especially the U.S. at the time, had a female candidate. Why did the U.S. did not secure a win for a female candidate at the same time Liberian women secure a win? I mean, that's an interesting question. That's an interesting food for thought. So wherever you are, whether you're in a policy or whether you're scholar, in answering that question will lead you to our research because our research answers the question that is why Liberian women were able to secure a two-term for a female candidate in the U.S. and other places around the world. I use the U.S. because the U.S. at the time had a female candidate. I know other countries have, but not at the same time. So if you want to answer that question, it'll lead you to our research. Our research finding in a case that Liberia produced all these ladies because of what we just explained. Another aspect is Liberian Women on Leadership at Ellen, of course, hosted the Women Leadership Conference. It's called the International Colloquia. I don't know what I got it correctly. I mean, that was a group of like 900 women that was, that was exclusively based in 2000 now. They were all on gender empowerment and gender dimension. And they discussed a lot of issues of gender dimension, of climate change, I mean, women empowerment. Also, on the Ellen leadership, we saw a lot of women in cabinets. That's another form of measurement participation because we measure women participation or female participation after the armed conflict by cabinet minister. That is, how many women in a cabinet position? That's another measure we use in our data analysis. I mean, there were also female legislature, I mean, female politicians. And then finally, the women peace and security issue during Ellen Johnson's early reign. I mean, you have female that were in the security sector. You have female immigration. As we speak to you currently, uh, we have female general in the army. I mean, there's women peace and security. We have female on peacekeeping mission in Mali. So all these issues as a result of uh, Ellen Johnson Salib, but principally because of female participation during the armed conflict in Liberia. So I thank you, then I will stop here and we'll discuss the rest of those during the Q&A. Thank you.